Hey guys, it's Tony Sum Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a quick look around the MSI Z97 Gaming 5. They've brought in a new naming range and it's going to be Gaming 3579. There's a lower end classic range which is black and blue. The, the gaming stuff is black and red. And then what we've also got is the overclock range which is black and yellow. All nice and simple. You know what you got with the colour. It's pretty cool. Audio Boost 2 and Killer, Intel chipset, we know all that stuff. Audio Boost 2, come on camera, do your thing. Thank you. Right, so you can see there we've got high quality audio capacitors, audio isolation line, then we've got high quality audio amplifiers, golden jacks, direct audio power, there's a little switch that you can flick for the, um, uh, the USBs, and then we've got EMI shielding, killer networking, and it is the 2200 fully fledged one as well. <coughs> And then this uh, MSI USB audio power, which if you read there, it's so that it can deliver a stable 5 volt when connecting multiple USB devices. And that's obviously perfect for like external USB DACs and stuff. So for any of you out there that have got really high end um, uh, audio. Multi GPU, which does actually mean something on this. Sound Blaster Cinema, the gaming app, which helps with your graphics cards as well. If you've got an MSI gaming graphics card, and then you get a six month license for XSplit Gamecaster. But what we need to do is, dun dun dun, my very best crudes, um, kind of imitation, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, heat sinks. Now, I'm going to tell you this because I didn't know with, by looking at them, I had to be told the heat sinks are now based on dragon claws. And if you look at them, you can kind of possibly maybe see. Now I think that I do like the look of the heat sinks, I really do. Um, but the the little silver dragon on the side just kind of reminds me how much I liked the older style MSI heat sinks that were essentially a dragon. When you looked at them side on, you had that whole kind of dragon head kind of thing and they looked brilliant. Um, uh, the, the, these ones, the claw type designs, does seem a little bit more grown up. I do like that, but it's just this silver dragon on the side just reminds me how much I really did like the last ones. You can see it's on there as well. Um, so it's up to you. What do you think? Uh, now, one thing I will say, which I bring up in the review, for all of those of you out there that might want to get a little bit handy with a bit of paint or something, the red heat sinks can be removed. They're screws. And because my camera is so awesome, it's going to focus. Well, it has already. Um, you can see the screws. Oh, look at that, yes. And it's both sides. So what you can do is you can whiz those off. And if you wanted to, you could paint those red bits any color you liked. And then when you look at the rest of the board, yes, you do have that MSI badge there, which you'd have to contend with, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, that'd probably come off. And then you'd only have to do something about this. So really, if you wanted to change the color, there's nothing else that's really red on the board. So I'd say that would be an option. Layout on the board is the multiple graphics that we talked about before is good because you've got the main PCI Express slot. That's one down from the top. That's great for CPU coolers like the NHD 15, which are re getting really fat and kind of, you know, really wide now. Um, but there's two slots between, which means you can have a triple slot graphics card here and you'd still be able to fit your second one. Most importantly, what it does mean is when you fit your normal dual slot graphics card here, there's a slot between so that your top graphics card has got some room to breathe before you have the bottom one in. You're always going to run in two cards, even this close, they're going to end up getting slightly warmer temperatures, um, but short of having a tornado in your case and sounding like an absolute noob because you've fitted Delta 220 CFM fans, you can't really get away from it. While we're over on this side though, you can see this audio section. The, uh, got the switch there for the, the power on the back, which I'll show in a sec. You can see it's quite a fat section. We've got quite a lot of caps in here, the EMI shield, there's your um, amps. So there's a fair old bit there. You can see around the back. You can see the trail. Oh, there we go. We can see the trail that comes out. It comes out quite far compared to some of the other ones. Um, but around the back, there's a sticker on the top. Look. USB audio power. And you can stick that on. I don't know whether it means it's just on these slots, whether it's spread across. I'm waiting for clarification from MSI about that. You can see the gold-plated audio jacks here got four USB 3s, HDMI, that's a killer Ethernet as well, although I've not seen the sticker on there, but we see it on the box, it is killer um, networking, DVI, V-sub, D-sub sorry, 
USB, USB, these are both USB 2, and then we've got the uh, um, PS2 port. These are red because it's technically part of their, this is where you should put your keyboard and mouse if you've got it, it's like their gaming bit. Um, but these are still really, really handy. I, I still, I'm so happy on some boards when I see that we've still got USB 2s, especially when you are, oh sorry, PS2s, especially when you start to overclock. Now we've got the uh, M2 slot here, we've got the short, medium and the long one. I think it's 40, 60 something and an 80. I do need to read up about that. USB 3, right angle, very nice. Six um, SATAs down the side, no SATA Express. We've got the M2 anyway. Large heatsink, that again I think is quite grown up. Um, again, what do you think about that? Tell me, let me know, I am interested in your thoughts. Uh, we do have a PCI poster down here, but even though we've got voltage checkpoints up here, I was slightly dismayed that there's not even a tiny little power button switch just for testing and stuff, but you know, got to pick up something that we would change. Um, around the CPU socket, there's eight uh, power phases. You can see them in there and you can see the black caps as well. Focus in, SFC. They're the caps that uh, MSI always use. Oh, look at that light. There's only natural light in here at the moment as well. Um, that's really about it. The only other thing that we need to cover is uh, fan headers. We've got one there, one there. There's another one there. There's one down the bottom there. I do believe that there's another one further along, but I'll know I'm missing things. And the only other one is there, and that's the system fan. So let me know what you think about the uh, Dragon Claw heatsink. Let me know what you thought about the idea of the uh, screws as well, because they are just so easily removed. There we go. You can see those screws because the heat sinks can, the red bits can be removed. So you could get handy with a bit of paint. Uh, so let me know what you think. Would you keep it red? Would you change the colour? Did you prefer the old heat sinks? Do you like these new dragon ones? Do, 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 do tell. But it is nice for an MSI gaming board to actually have some decent audio on it for a change because that seemed to be re reserved for the overclocking boards before and I found that a little bit confusing. Uh, this one's going to be coming in around the uh, 110 to 115 pound mark so it's very very aggressively priced and it's full size ATX unlike some of the uh, um, other boards from other manufacturers which are slightly thinner but I'm going to nab off now and I'm going to look forward to seeing your comments Click to go through to the article on the main website and also come and post your thoughts in the forum about the heat sinks and the motherboards too. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out.